Welcome again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Paul emphasizes holiness. Paul writes, Do this knowing the time, that it is already time for you to awaken out of sleep. Now we know that Paul is not talking about real, like sleeping, like every night you fall asleep. He's talking about spiritual sleep, where you just, you kind of be lulled to sleep. You, you're you more like caught up with the things of the world and you're not so thinking too much about the Lord as, as you should be. You're not so taking the scriptures seriously as you should be. You need to wake up, Paul says. For salvation is now nearer to us than when we first believed. The night is far gone. Again, Paul is speaking here in analogies. The night here is referring to the old sinful life. When you used to live in sin. When you used to sin a lot and you didn't really have too much conscience about it. You lived in the night. You did things away from God's presence. You did things apart from God's law. Paul says the night is far gone. In other words, the old sinful man, the old sinful self, the old sinful lifestyle is far gone. And the day is near. Let's therefore throw off deeds of darkness. Paul is using pretty aggressive language here. Throw off deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let's walk properly as in the day. Not reveling, not, big key word there, not in reveling and drunkenness. Not, again, key word here, not in sexual promiscuity and lustful acts. And not in strife and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. No provision for the flesh for its lusts. Now I find it kind of ironic that Paul really drills it home here. He really nails it to the floor. We need to walk in the light. We need to throw off the deeds of darkness. We need to walk properly, not in reveling, drunkenness, sexual promiscuity, sexual immorality, and lustful acts, not in strife and jealousy. Because you see, whenever you talk to self-proclaimed Christians about sin and about putting off sin and about living holy and about how God wants you to live according to his rules, his laws, his guidelines, his instructions. You know what? 9.9 times out of 10, they always quote Paul to come against that. They always quote Paul and to say, oh no, you know what? It's not by works. You know, it's by grace. It's by faith that we're saved. We don't have to try to do anything good. You know, we don't have to try to follow God's law anymore. We don't have to do anything like that. It's just just all faith. It's just all grace. But you see, the irony is here, Paul says very clearly, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision. Not, well, you know, some, because, you you know, I understand we're all human and we all make mistakes. No, Paul said, make no provision provision for the flesh. Paul gives absolutely no room for sin, okay? Make no provision. A lot of Christians today, they do make provision for the flesh, for sin, for the lusts of the flesh. They do make provision for that. How do they do that? Well, they quote, ironically, they quote the same person who wrote this. They quote Paul. They say, oh, you know, it's by grace we're saved. They're trying to make provision for their sin, for their lies, for their sexual immorality for all the evil that they're doing. They're trying to make provision by referencing grace and faith and all this other stuff and in putting off the whole idea. Instead of putting off the deeds of darkness, they put off the idea of living in holiness and righteousness and following God's ways and laws according to the scriptures. They put off the day and they put on the night in the name of grace and faith. Paul makes it very clear here. We are to live in holiness. Remember to seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.